Good morning, everyone. I'm Ed Bartling, your external wholesaler. And today, I first want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your business. Thank you for nurturing and building that relationship with financial markets. And thank you for investing your time with us today. I do believe it's going to be a fruitful one for everyone. The drawing for the $50 gift card will be done at the end of the webinar. And you do have to be present to win. Speaking of drawings, don't forget our ongoing March Madness giveaway. One lucky winner will choose either a locking gun safe or a flat screen smart TV. And four runners up will receive a $50 gift card. The live drawing will be April 7th, and the qualification runs to April 1st. So you still have time to get registered and get those tickets in. Now, be ready to jot down ideas that Dana is going to share with us today. And be sure to contact your internal wholesaler for a deeper dive. Protective Life is our featured premier carrier this month. When I think of Protective Life, I think of four Ps. Protective Life provides permanent protection. Life insurance designed to stand the test of life. Now, Dana Brown has over 17 years experience in our industry. The last 12 years, Dana has served as a senior hybrid wholesaler for Protective Life, supporting the Great Plains Territory. She has focused her career on developing and distributing life insurance products and services in the independent brokerage agency marketplace. Dana holds a Charter Life Underwriter designation, CLU, and is licensed in Series 6 and 63 securities. In 2020, Dana received the Internal Wholesaler of the Year Award. Now, Dana resides in Hebron, Kentucky, and in her free time, loves to cook and teach second grade Awana and kindergarten Sunday school. Folks, I bring to you Dana Brown. Thank you very much, Ed. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time today. Well, for those of you who don't know where Hebron, Kentucky is, first of all, I just want to quickly tell you, we are in Bengals territory. So you probably saw us on the news quite regularly in the last several weeks. Um, we did not win the Super Bowl, but it was extremely exciting in this area. I will tell you there is no orange and black in the entire area. It has all been sold out. So kind of some cool things that we learned about our neighbors during this time was the fact that how our neighborhood can come together and create Bengal signs, T-shirts, sweatshirts. So in the future, I have learned I don't need to go to a store. I can just go to my neighbors. So kind of some fun facts. I've been with Protective, like Ed said, um, 12 years. I'm going on 13. It's hard to believe I actually moved to this area for a job. So I'm a transplant. So um, thank you for your time today. Thank you always so much for your business. We really appreciate it. Um, I work in tandem with Kurt Noldy, who's our, our regional vice president that works with financial markets exclusively. So, you know, we're just, we love working with them. They're a good partner, and um, today I just am thankful for the opportunity to walk through this with you all. So what we're going to talk about today is some protective permanent solutions, but I'll probably talk a little bit about um, some unique things that we have with protective. Let me change my slide here. One second. Um, we're going to talk about what products we have. Um, we're going to highlight two products. We'll probably do three products. Um, talk a little bit about how and when to choose which one, and then most importantly, which I get the most benefit um, out of anytime I'm hearing other people talk, <laughs> is sales ideas. And then if you have questions, as Ed said earlier, please put it in the chat box. Um, you know, you can ask me anything, relatively. <laughs> so, all right, let's get started. So, let's talk about our products a little bit. So we're going to start to the left and then move to the right. So when we're talking about the permanent products for protective, we I'm going to start and call this our forerunning street product called the lifetime assurance, okay? This is the one when you're quoting, 
our products is going to be the product that it probably shows up the most. It's very much focused on guaranteed death benefit, um, lapse protection. We'll talk about return of premium in, uh, later on in the presentation. Um, it's minimum premium, uh, very simple, very stripped down guaranteed death benefit. Anytime you look at this, this is the one that you're going to see from a quoting perspective. The Advantage Choice product, actually the Lifetime Assurance is built off that product, the Advantage Choice. The difference is this. The Advantage Choice allows you to put 1035 on it. Um, I will tell you behind the scenes, you can technically put 1035 on a Lifetime Assurance, but it really doesn't make sense to do it the way we've priced it. So we've actually taken the 1035 box completely off the Lifetime Assurance product. So if you're looking at short pay scenarios, you know, your 1035, anything like that, you're going to want to look at the Advantage Choice or the Index Choice or the Pro Classic 2. Lifetime Assurance, like I said, level pay, stripped down product, okay? Um, now, this one has also a return of premium on it. We'll talk about the differences between the two products with their return of premiums. They are a little bit different. Um, something I want you to kind of walk away with with protective is the design of our products are very simple. Um, we are as simple as we can get it, honestly. So just when you're thinking of protective, we're really not out to to get you as far as um, changing the products, making the design hard, okay? Uh, so that's that's kind of just when you're thinking about a product, just think of that when you're you're thinking of protective. So we're going to move over to the index choice product. Now, if you're looking for cash value accumulation, uh, this is the product you're going to look at. So we did make a change this year, which we'll talk a little bit because I don't want to ruin the other slides I have. But um, we have, um, it will also take 1035. It's good on short pays. Um, it's very, uh, you can guarantee it all the way to 120, or sorry, guaranteed it to 90 but you can also um, run on the current side all the way to 121. We also this year uh, changed it up a little bit. So the guarantee only goes to 90 where it used to go uh, 105, 121. <clears throat> but when we made that change, what we did was we actually added an option two or an option B. So there's a little bit more cash value accumulation that you can do on this product when we made that change. And that was back in July of this year. Um, the Pro Classic 2, I'm probably not going to talk about that a whole heck of a lot. Um, that's your situation where you are just wanting to focus on guarantees, but you want some of that cash value potential. Honestly, I will tell you today, when I'm looking at between the index product and the Pro Classic, most of the time I'm going to look at the index product. Um, Pro Classic 2, there's nothing wrong with it, but index tends to come up more just, just looking at our product line. All right, so let's jump into it here. So let's talk about the lifetime assurance. What's some some fun things about that? So like I said before, no 1035 exchanges designed for level pay. Um, lapse protection with minimum premium, little cash value. Um, the typical customer range is um, ages 50 plus. Uh, like I said, you can do lapse protection to 121. Um, it also has interest-free catch-up premiums. That's kind of a cool design that they've got on there. Um, I will tell you with this product, the one thing that if you were to walk away today with this particular product is just remember, lapse, because it's designed as level pay, is it's not as toler tolerable, if that's a word, with if you go, you know, two years into the product and you are not paying the, the premium stream that you need to, then it could impact this policy above all the other policies we're going to talk about. So lifetime assurance, you really need to be in it for the long haul. It's a good product. Um, the quoting software, also, if you decide to show only to age 95, the cool thing is on the illustration itself, it will show you 100, 105, 121. So the kind of a cool thing when you're looking at our illustrations. So um, issue ages on this, 18 to 85. Um, up to 75 for select preferred. Uh, the one other caveat on this product is you got to go at least 20 years or to age 90 for this product. Now, 
is going to be traditional comp. That means no rolling target. Now, the other products that we're talking about today, the Lifetime Assurance and the Index, those are rolling target products. So just a little bit on that. All right, so let's talk about return on premium. So when we're talking about the Lifetime Assurance, as long as you go after year 10, you are able to get 25% if you do a full surrender of your premiums paid. This is available, and it's available anytime after the 10th policy anniversary. That's going to be different than our conversation for um, the Lifetime Advantage, okay? Uh, we can also offer this on standard, preferred, select, preferred, up through a table four and a $5 flat extra. The one rule is if it's a tobacco user, we cannot do return a premium. So just some things on that. The major difference between the Lifetime Assurance and the Lifetime Advantage is the Lifetime Advantage, you can actually have in year 21, you can get 50% of your premium back if you do a full surrender. Or in year 26, you can get 100% back. The big difference is you only have two option dates, whereas with this product, as long as you're after the 10th policy anniversary, you can get up to 25% of your premiums paid back. Um, and then you'll see a little caveat down here that says limited to the 50% of the lowest death benefit if you did a face reduction. So just some things on that. So talking about the index choice product. So like I said before, all of our products, easy, simple design. Um, some of the, the big things that are, are different are we've got one um, index that we're using, the S&P 500, okay, that's it. We don't have, you know, two or three other indexes, we're only using one. Our cap rate is 8%, our floor is 0%, and we have a 100% participation rate. Uh, one thing that is different is the max illustrated rate did adjust. It's now 5.21, and I believe that did go in, in effect maybe February 1st, if I remember correctly. I didn't change the slide. It was, it was uh, something that came up, and I didn't think about it. So, um, so there's some th good things to that. Okay, uh, just talking about one thing before I forget. So when you're thinking about, like, cap rates and you're thinking about, you know, the illustrated rate, we change that once per year. Now, I will tell you, we could technically change the cap rate um, a couple of times a year. We typically don't. I've only seen it really adjust once per year. Um, it's the highest I've ever seen it was 9.0, and we're now at 8.0, and we're talking, I think, eight years into the product on this one. Um, and we've been in a low interest environment for a very long time. Um, so that's, that's kind of, now, now I think that's going to change, but right now that's, that's the reasoning. So, uh, one thing that we obviously have to adhere to is the AG49 regulations. So we have to maintain when we look at our interest rates and things like that, we have to look at them at least once per year. So the guaranteed rate is 3.25%. Um, now, we call this the, when do we sweep in the index account? So that is going to be the 15th of the month. And our guaranteed minimum rate is 1%. And that's all illustrated and shows it on our illustrations for you. There we go. Um, is premium payments. So if you pay monthly, that tends to be what people pay mostly. They pay monthly and then, then it goes into a segment. And you can have up to 12 segments at a time. So that's not actually a bad thing. So what that basically means, if you had a $100 payment, and say you put 80% in the index or in 20% in the fixed, which I'll be honest with you, most people put all of it in the index, but you can change it if you want. Um, basically what that means is that of that $100, $80 would go into the, um, in the index account on the 15th of the month. Every segment or every month, you would have a new segment and then it comes due in 365 days. So then you can see how it performs. That's a really good way to spread the risk. So basically, the, in just talking with this, in, in just since we're looking at the slide and how it sweeps into the account and we have each of these segments, there's 12 segments at a time, and that each month creates a segment that doesn't come, and do, come due until a full year. 
and we can always give you an index crediting history. So if you ever ask for it, it's updated monthly, obviously, when the segments come due. So we can always show you how that performs. What that basically gets you is, so the S&P, even if they had a negative return, it's still only going to be 0%. We will not credit you a negative balance. That helps you in the long run. So you can only get the positive upside or you get a zero. So by spreading the risk out in each segment, that actually helps you. I also... Um, thinking about this out loud, um, if you have a lump sum situation or a 1035 that you are a little nervous about putting that all in one segment, you actually can do what we call a monthly level transfer until that lump sum amount is transferred or used up, basically, where it sits in the fixed account. And then we can, every month until it's used up, we can put it in those different segments to spread the risk out a little bit. So don't think that if you're doing a large lump sum that you have to put it in one segment. We do have a monthly transfer that that option is available, and sometimes I recommend it. So just some thoughts on that. We'll let you do what you want to do because you guys are the experts, I'm sure, with index. But I have known over time that sometimes it, it's a benefit to spread the risk out a little bit. All right, so let's talk about how do I choose the best option. So really it comes down to what's most important for the client, cash value, last protection, um, or do you need both? The big question when we're trying to figure out between the guaranteed products versus the index product is, is the customer willing to take risk on 0% of their interest for higher growth potential? If the answer is yes, then the index product's a good fit. If they're like, no, I don't want to do that, then you can do that at the Pro Classic. You can throw it into that, and that will give them, I believe it's going to be 3.25%. You know, if you're doing the index, you can do up to 5.21 is what it's crediting right now. So it's totally up to you. Nothing is wrong. Now, for last protection, is it like we're in it for the long haul? Cash value is really not a, so much of a concern, and we just want to guarantee this as far out as we can to make sure they've got coverage because, hey, what if they have longevity in their family? That will give them the ability to continue the policy longer on a guaranteed rate. Um, if so, the advantage choice of lifetime assurance would be your option. And then we'll, we'll talk about another one that I didn't put on any of these slides, which is one of my, my fan favorites. So. Um, so let's talk about some sales ideas. Okay, so. We, this is called a, a cross-sell and layering technique. So in this situation, you're looking at our suite of products. Um, we're talking about our classic choice term. Now, that's our street term product. That's the one that is going to show up on a spreadsheet all the time. We have another product we'll talk later that's called the custom choice product that I like as well. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what the differences are. So this uh, product, if you look at it, we can go up to 40 years. So if this guy's 45, we can do, you know, this would be coverage that would go to 85. But, oh, wait a second. You'll notice the premium, the higher we go between 35 and 40 years for the death benefit for the classic choice, that's a pretty high premium. You know, 118, 242. You're probably asking, well, why is it so much more expensive? Well, you're getting at the secret place that insurance carriers know, which is our mortality. Most people live and sit around age 80. So when that happens, we know that their premiums are going to jack up because they're potentially going to die at age 80. Now, we know obviously people can live longer, but average life expectancy, depending on their health class, could be age 80. So that's why you're going to see that jump in premium. So what we did here is, so think of this long term. So we've got a situation, um, oh, before I forget, one of the benefits to doing this cross-sell and layering technique is with protective, you only have to use one app. So you don't need to do two separate applications to do term and permanent coverage. You can do it all on one. So in this situation, what we decided to do, the, the total, this was a live case. So this was a total out of pocket of 175 they had that he didn't want to pay any more than that. So I'll, it is a plug and play situation where you're looking at the software saying, okay, how much can I give a guaranteed death benefit 
and how much potentially can I give its term as possible? So with our budget, and we knew that this guy needed 500000 all in. 30 years, 45, he's going to be 75 years old. His mortgage is probably paid off at this point. Um, he needs that mortgage protection, getting the kids through school, all that within the 30 years. So he'll be 75 at that point. Um, so he felt 400000 He could. He needed to do a 30-year term. That's what the agent decided to do. That gave him $81 per month. It actually... Um, I think it was 70 now. We rounded up, so we're not that far off. Um, 100K, the premium was like $86 uh, per month. And so, and that went to 121. So we fit his budget of 100. We got below the 175 that he was looking per month. We did 168, giving this client permanent coverage all the way out. So if he has longevity in his family, great. It goes forever uh, to his beneficiary if something were to happen to him. And then the 400,000 30 year term, he would have that for the full 30 years. If he wanted to continue past 30 years, he could do that, but the premium would be expensive at that point. You know, no option is wrong. You can also see that we looked at um, the lifetime assurance at 90, 100. You can do blends um, on this product to fit whatever you think. I mean, if you talk to my the wholesaler that I work with and have worked with for years, he will tell you there's no way that man's going to live to 121. <laughs> so I was like, well, I don't think he will either. But, you know, uh, if you have longevity in your family, you know, there's there's potential. My grandfather lived to 96. So that's one option. This other one's a little more interesting. If we used the same out-of-pocket need, the 175 or 168 in the situation, what we did was instead of doing the lifetime assurance like we did in the other example. Let's throw same premium, same situation. We already know that the 400000 is $81 per month. They wanted to keep that, but what if we threw it into the lifetime insurance? What would that get us? So we threw it on the illustration. So we said, all right, if we put that $87 per month into it, we know right off the bat that the guarantee of 100000 will last um, ends in a couple months into age 90. So we know that this product is actually designed only to go to 90. So there you go. Same premium. Um, but there's some upside cash value potential. If you look here, um, now that's showing 5.17. It's even better right now at 5.21. But if you look at with the lifetime assurance, you didn't see those columns because there wasn't cash value in there that you could see as illustrated. This shows you that if the S&P performed at the 5.17, you know, in any given year, let's pick 95, you would have 110,628 in cash value available to you. Or if you look at the 3.25, that mid range right there at age 95, you have 24,014 in surrender value. Now think of this, the lifetime assurance, we're putting the same premium in very little effort, no, no difference other than we're just switching the product. Also, the upside goes to 105. So, yes, the other one was guaranteed to 121, agreed. But this gives you a little more flexibility. Like we said in the very, very beginning, the lifetime assurance doesn't have all the flexibility that, like, the index and the advantage does. So, it, it gives you cash value potential that if you needed it, because one thing we do know, as Ed said in one of his P's, is that, you know, life does happen and we need to protect people. This gives them the ability that if they need some liquidity or they need the protection, it's there for them to use that as well. The other thing is too, if you notice after age 92, the death benefit starts increasing because it's hidden within corridor. That's why that's showing there. Okay, so this is one of my favorite ones. So this is the split 1035 exchange. And this is gonna introduce a newer product to you um, called the custom choice. And I did not throw a slide in here um, on the custom choice, but I want to give you a two second history if I can on this product. So the custom choice is basically it's a universal life product that was stripped down as a term from years 10 to 30. Back several years ago, it was our term product. We have since gone back and created our, our own standalone true term product that's extremely competitive, the classic choice product. This custom choice, though, 
had a huge following for from our agents because of the flexibility that you can do in this, one of which is 1035. So because this is a universal life product, you can 1035 into this product. So this situation is a little bit different. So we've got a gentleman who had, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to say Lincoln because I'm, I'm pretty sure this was a Lincoln policy that this happened to. Um, I don't like to drop names, but it was a situation where this guy had a Lincoln policy. His legacy at that point was 800000 and his cash value was 200 in it. So he was like, look, okay, my needs have changed. I cannot add uh, long-term care coverage, chronic illness coverage on this particular plan that I have at this moment in time. My goal is to add this. My health hasn't changed. I want to I want to increase my what I have as much as I can. So we took him through this. We did a blend. We said, okay, we know we've got two hundred thousand in cash value. What can we do if we take the index product for permanent coverage? We throw on extend care of eleven thousand um, yeah eleven thousand seven hundred per month, and then how much term coverage can we add so that he also has more coverage for his family if he were to pass away. So what it shook out to be is that 200,000, we basically did a lump sum 1035 and we can split those two 1035s into two products that's allowed um, and keeps the 1035 exchange. We put 122,977 as a lump sum into the index choice product that gave us a death benefit of 553,000. It covered him through age 92, which I just want to say to you, a lot of times when we're looking at uh, chronic illness coverage, a lot of them start to use their benefits between the range of 88 to 92. So that was kind of what we were looking for, um, for him. That's what he felt that if you were to trigger it, that's what would happen. He also uh, needed, like I said, the long-term care coverage. So we put as much on there as we could. It was 11.7. Um, that's the per diem amount. That's the difference between long-term care and chronic illness. Chronic illness is an acceleration of death benefit. So with that, it's filed differently. It's a 101G filing as opposed to long-term care, which is a 7702. Not expecting you guys to know that, but we have to know it because we sell it. <laughs> and so basically what that did was um, gave him, took care of the long-term care need. In this instance, it was chronic illness. That's what we have on our, our life insurance plans. Then we went to our custom choice product and we did a 20-year policy. We were able to do with a lump sum payment, that 1035 we were talking about, we were able to create a $2 million death benefit for his loved ones to cover him for those 20 years. So max 50 at this point, that would get him to 70. Um, one thing I also want to tell you about the custom choice, because it's on a universal life chassis, yes, that premium is, um, is it went the full 20 years. But if he wanted to continue past, say he had longevity in his family and he lived longer, he can still pay premiums and the death benefit will decrease on that product. It doesn't necessarily go away. It, it'll bottom out to like 10000 on the custom choice. It also, too, because this was our term product back in the day, this also has a, um, has a uh, conversion privilege. So you can do... Uh, you can convert this up to age 70 if you wanted. So if he wanted to do that prior, go to another permanent plan for this custom choice, he could do that. Uh, classic choice doesn't have as robust of a conversion as this one. So I'm, I, I've loved this product. We've had it a long time. Um, and it's got some bells and whistles. You can create a five-year out of a 10-year. There's just lots of things you can do with that product. So that is just, that's another blend that we can do with split 1035s. I see this one probably the most um, to try to generate as much uh, death benefit as possible. So that's the two sales ideas I wanted to go over with you in talking with our suite of products and some of the solutions we have for you. I'm going to open it up to the group to see, is there any questions that you have Anything that I can talk about that I haven't talked about that you are curious about, I'm going to go ahead and, and open it up to you all. Okay, 
So we, ours is an acceleration of death benefit. It's not, so it's, they don't have to be in a nursing home. So it's basically the way that rider works for extended care. It's, they can't perform two of six, uh, two of six activities of daily living, toileting, dressing, the whole nine yards. The normal is what long-term care is or a severe cognitive impairment. Okay. That, um, that triggers the rider. Same as long-term care. Uh, the difference that they put, so we cut them a check. So it is um, indemnity, not reimbursement. So they go on claim and say they chose 11700 for their monthly benefit. They could choose less if they wanted, or they can use the full amount. We don't care. We cut them a check. It comes dollar for dollar off their death benefit, and they use it for whatever they need. If they got a guy that needs to come and mow their lawn, they can use it for that. If they need somebody to pick up groceries, if that's what the need is, they do that. We don't, that's what it is. The original part of this is that you had to have at least be chronically ill for 12 months. That's changed. There, It's 90 days is how it is now. So, okay. Regular term example, 30 year, age 40 convertible. Also. Okay, good question. So that one, so with the classic choice, like I told you um, or mentioned before is the conversion option only goes 18 years or to age 70, whichever's first. And that covers from 20, 25, and 30 year term and 40 year. So 18 years is the max they can do. And on the classic choice, you only got five years to go to the better products. After that, you go to um, the, we have two, uh, the non participating whole life and the pro classic legacy, which are conversion products. So they're priced differently than our street products. So you can still do it. I'm just saying the uh, custom choice product that I was mentioning, they they can go the full 20 years that there is a rule, 20 years or to age 70 on that product. And they can go the entire time on our street products. So they can do lifetime assurance, index choice, advantage. They can do all of them. Okay, so until the death benefit is exhausted, so, Bill, if it's eleven seven, if it's a five hundred thousand dollar policy, it's how many years that the eleven seven goes into per month? So, I don't know, five six years. Um, so until the death benefit's completely gone, they can accelerate up to a hundred percent of the death benefit. Any other questions? I don't see any further questions, Dana. Well, if you do, you can always reach out to our. Our fun people on a fabulous day at Financial Markets uh, with any questions you have. And I can help, too, if they, they need to reach out to me, they can. Very good. Thank you, Dina. I'll now turn it over to Neil Sperling, our vice president, who's then, uh, going, <coughs> who is then now going to co conduct that drawing. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dana. Thank you, Ed. I'll get that on the screen here in just a moment. All right. All the names are in the hat. It's been shuffling. And who will win the $50 Amazon gift card? And a drum roll. And it is Sandy Picone. Congratulations, Sandy, for winning the $50 Amazon gift card. And for everyone else, I hope you have a good, uh, got some good sales ideas here today with what you can do with a protective portfolio. I'll turn it back to you, Ed. Yeah, thank you, Neil. And again, congratulations, uh, Sandy. And uh, again, I picked some fruit there, some real excellent ideas there, folks. And again, I would recommend be contacting your internal wholesaler. Say, tell me more about that split 1035 exchange. Um, it gives the, the client some choices there to make. Again, thank you, Dana. And thank you, our clients, the agents listening today. Mark your calendars, if you will, for March the 16th. March the 16th will be our next Premier Carrier webinar. Until then, thank you, thank you, thank you, and everyone have an excellent, good day. Take care.